Praise the Lord, everybody. I need your help this morning. Come on, can you help me this morning? Come on, can you put your hands together and help me this morning? I need your strength this morning, but the Lord knows all about it. Help me, help me live, Jesus. I wonder who will help me live, Jesus. You say you love God, help me live, Jesus. Clap your hands, help me live, Jesus. I wonder who will help me live, Jesus. I wonder who will help me live, Jesus. Shout if you want to, help me live, Jesus. Help me live, Jesus. Lift him, lift him. Lift him, lift him higher, 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 higher. Now draw, I'll draw all men, draw all men unto me. I wonder who will help me. I wonder who will help me live, Jesus. Help me live, Jesus. Come on and help me, help me. Down if you want to, I help me live with you. Clap your hands, help me. Help me, help me live with Jesus. Help me live, Jesus. Lift him. Like the Lord. 
hold my body and he taught me to be healed my body and he um, taught me to run Today, we are here in God's house, and I greet you this morning. I welcome you to the sanctuary. I welcome you to our virtual worship space. I pray something with you that will bless you, that will remind you, that will even confirm in your heart that you made the right choice when you chose Jesus. Amen. Amen. That you won't have no doubt that the Lord will bring you out. I want to thank our musicians this morning for gathering faithfully this morning. Amen. I want to thank you all for helping them lift up Jesus on this fourth Sunday and uh, the month of June. I always say where two and three are gathered together. There in the midst is the Lord's name to be praised. Amen. This morning, our, our choir stand is empty, but our hearts are full. You know, when you have three or four and, and things happen all at the same time, amen, you have some that are going through health challenges right now, some that are recovering right now. We have some that have children who are having a banquet right now. Uh, and so we just praise God. That God said he always has a ram in the bush. And I heard you all lifting up the name of Jesus this morning. Amen. So y'all keep on lifting him up higher and higher. The word said every round goes higher and higher. Because there will come a time when we're going to have to sing our own praise. We're going to have to pray our own prayers. We're going to have to read our own scripture. Because at that moment, God say, what did you do? 
Not what everybody else didn't do or did do. But what did you do to praise my name? What did you do to worship me? In spirit and in truth. So this morning, we're just thankful for the opportunity to just give God the praise. And so if you all would worship with us, praise with us, I know that God's spirit will reside with us. Amen. Amen. We are going to have our opening prayer and our scripture coming from Reverend Ezekiel Powers. Amen. Heavenly Father, Master above all, we your servants come this morning, God, praising your holy name. We come to lift you up, God, and give thanks for all you have done all you're going to do and all you're even doing right now in the midst of some storms Lord you, you are proven that you're God above all and you'll be church this morning we need your presence we have church until you come so we open up our hearts and our minds this morning and asking you to please that we might worship your holy name. And when it's all said and done, God, we know we just can't do it without you. So will you stop by this morning and touch our hearts, touch the depths of our souls, be filled with your Holy Ghost. Make your rounds around the musicians, Lord, this morning. And strengthen them, God, as they carry the heavy load this morning. Move around those on the inner their spirits and spirit. Even the ones that are doing the technology, uh, working our and God, we need you to stop by the doorposts of the hush. And then, God, for everyone that entered this building with us today, we, we need for them to be on one accord. Because we know that where there's unity, there's strength. In your name, Lord. I you today that you would not only do all of these things, but we had special prayers that needed for the sick to be shut in. Many names to call, Lord, but you know them all. And God, that there are those who, who are crying out this morning. Might not be a part of our membership, God, but a part of your kingdom building. To be on the tables this morning. Somebody's crying in the house this morning, God, pleading that they are not guilty charge. Will you move, Lord? We know that you're able. Somebody's crying out this morning, God, from the streets. Need shelter because they're falling on hard times. Will you do it, Lord? Oh, God, ask you that you will go and travel schoolhouses and into every home that where there's a child, Lord, and, and lift them up, Lord, and that they might get the learning and education that they might not be denied when that time comes. So God, we ask you to have your way as you always do. But what we need you to do this morning, God, is that you will align us, align our spirits and our souls this morning that we might receive and, and match up with your will and that every blessing that you have promised us will come. O 
Oh, we lift our hands to glory now. I'm telling you, thank you, God, for the many blessings. Now, God bless the preacher as she comes forth. Let a word come to us. Let her down in your storehouse and strip her of herself that she might be on one accord with you, Lord. And we might receive what it is that you have for us. In Jesus' name, this morning we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Psalms 139. I'll be reading verses 1 through 11. And then we will go to verses 23 through 25. Amen. And the scripture reads thusly from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, Oh, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I enter to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Shoel, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, then there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. And the light of night. And then going to verse 20. Oh, verse 12, I'm sorry. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of God to encourage the people of God. And let us all say thanks be unto God. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to get our congregational singing going this morning. Amen. I heard you back there, Brother Mixon. Amen. Y'all come on. Jesus, Jesus.
when I felt so alone, the Lord, you told me all I had to do was call. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes late at night, when I got up on my knees, uh, everything was all right, and I called Jesus. I called Jesus, oh, how I love calling your name. Anybody know the name Jesus? Oh, Jesus, every day, your name. Oh, we call on you, Jesus. Jesus, how I love, how I call in your name. We love the name, Jesus. Anybody know him, Jesus? Every day, hey, your name, oh. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Something about Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is a sweet. I know. I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is a sweet. I call on Jesus. I call Jesus how I love, love calling. We call on Jesus. We call on you, Jesus, every day. We call on you, Jesus. We call Jesus, oh, how I love, I love. We call Jesus, we call Jesus every day. We love your name, Jesus, every day, every day, your name is the same. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus, sweet Jesus, how I love calling your name. Thank you. Thank you for joining in with us to lift up the name of Jesus. Just a few highlights that I would like to bring before you uh, this week uh, to have on your mind as we move toward the end of this month. I want to uh, share with you, we've been talking about our ministry meetings and uh, we're still in the throes of getting those uh, all scheduled. And hopefully now that um, at least for the next my travel schedule is calm and we'll get the be ready to have our church conference second Saturday in August at 1 p.m. Uh, pray that you are able to put that date on your calendar and be able to be in attendance. 
because see, you are Mount Zion. Mount Zion is not a building, is not the pews, is not the pastor, it is the and so when we say Mount Zion, it is body. So we pray that you will be able to be willing uh, to attend and be willing to do the work that God has called us to do. I also want you to put this date on your calendar, September the 24th. Uh, will be our church anniversary. And I was going to look because, you know, we got off one year, but then we got back on schedule. And I wanted to look and see what was the exact year that we would. Uh, I think it will be here in 25th or 4th? 24th? Okay, I see a 4 in the back. Do I see a 5 going once? Amen. And I want to thank uh, Sister Patricia Price and Brother Homer for graciously agreeing to chair our church anniversary. Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to an awesome time. In the pandemic, uh, we celebrated the anniversary and we invited back one of your uh, previous pastors that pastored you when you were in downtown College Park. Uh, and he joined us via uh, Zoom, uh, and I thought it not robbery to invite him to show up in person. Amen. So the Reverend Jay will be our preacher on that day. Amen. Amen. Well, now, not Reverend Dr. Jay Haysco, but uh, presiding elder uh, Jay Haysco will be our guest preacher on that day. So please begin to share the word. Uh, share the news so that uh, we will have a grand time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, this past week, we had an awesome time. Of course, I missed the last day because I had to travel to Chicago, but we had an awesome uh, kickoff for uh, July 17th, uh, that month doing arts, crafts, uh, drama. Uh, it was awesome. We had guest uh, teachers for our adults and uh, our young people were, were engaged. And we just had a grand time. And I know it couldn't have been any less grander. Um, and I want to thank everyone who made it possible, who came out. I want to thank Sister Janice Garcia for doing our crafts. Uh, Chanel Glenn, one of our younger adults for doing our art. Um, Kalia Prayer did our drama. Uh, for our teachers, we had Sister Clark teach one night. I taught the young people. Uh, Reverend Prayer taught. Uh, then we had a uh, two nights. We had a guest um, uh, teacher from Greater Turner Chapel, Reverend, Reverend uh, Vincene Brown. And uh, we just had a great time. And then the food was just awesome. Uh, thank you, Sister Jones, and your food committee, your little helpers. Uh, everything from hot dogs to barbecue chicken to uh, sub sandwiches to homemade spaghetti, uh, watermelon. Uh, we just had it all, and we had a grand time. Uh, now, I'm going to just give a shout out to uh, Brother Freeman. Now, Brother Freeman, I heard you didn't come the last night. And Sister Chanel had something special for you, so she's going to have to get it to you, a special art project for you. And so I wanted to see it when it was finished. So we were just trying to make sure everyone had a great time and really enjoyed themselves. And I hope the ones that came, did y'all enjoy yourselves, the one that came? Amen. And those of you who had to come and couldn't come, uh, the date's already been set for next year. And so we will... Uh, uh, be back again, bigger and grander. And it was a great time. There was a lot of activity. We had awesome time. Uh, and I think for those of you who like to plan your calendar uh, so that it doesn't conflict, uh, I'm going to go ahead on and tell you what the date is. Um, it's here somewhere. Amen.
I'll find it. I'm going to share it with you before the before the uh, service is over because I want you all to be in attendance next year. Um, we did have to push out our date, and so we have to make some adjustments with our teachers. But And so you're seeing some of the pictures from our activities that took place uh, last, uh, last week. A uh, slide with some additional pictures up from vacation. Um, amen. Amen. Can I, oh, there we go. And we were just uh, having a great time, just enjoying ourselves. So I praise God for uh, what took place. We want to uh, remind you that uh, this coming week, we are now entering into the um, the final week of um, our food, our weekly food ministry, uh, our summer food program. Can I get the summer food slide? Amen. Well, it's not uh, where we uh, we we are okay. Yeah, the summer food site. This will be our final week, uh, and so we will still be here Monday through Friday up until the twenty eighth, uh, serving food daily. We've had quite a few families from the community come and share in that ministry and be blessed because uh, of that. Also. Um, I want to remind you that our summer camp uh, this Friday will be the date uh, the for that. Um, uh, day for our summer camp. They've had a very successful summer camp. And uh, we then will be regrouping and getting ready for school to start and kicking back off our after school program. Uh, so if there are individuals that uh, you know of who are looking for a safe and learning space for their kids after school, uh, we will have our after school program up and running once schools, excuse me, school starts. And uh, this year, praise the Lord, we'll be able to pick up our kids from school. Amen. Amen. Uh, because it's hard for parents uh, to choose us when part of their purpose of having an after-school program for their kids is because they are still at work. And so they're not able to go to the school, pick them up and then bring them here. And so that has really been a hampering to our ministry uh, fully functioning. And we praise God that we will be able to do that this year. Our CSFP program, our Food for Seniors is finally, I think getting its uh, traction finally being able to uh, boxes and I think we're starting to develop a waiting list uh, so uh, God's name be praised but still continue to share the word because we can always get more boxes if we get more names and so continue to just um, pray for the ministries that are going on here that God will continue to enlarge our territory I believe as we continue to work in this community and be a beacon of light uh, to the community, people will not only see us, they will see God. And that's what our work is about. It's not really about uh, us. It's about bringing people into a relationship with Christ. I do want to remind you that on fifth Sunday, uh, which is next Sunday, uh, we do not have Fifth Sunday. Uh, we will not be worshiping in person. Uh, and so please join us in all of your virtual spaces uh, to on next Sunday. And then we look forward to the first Sunday in August. Yes, it was. Amen. And our young people will be getting their minds ready to go back to school. As a matter of fact, for some of them, when we meet again, we've already started school because of some counties on the 1st of August and some not until the 7th. So we just ask you to continue to pray, pray for our young people, pray for our educators, 
environment. Uh, pray for one another. I want you to continue to lift up the uh, Stegall family. Uh, I shared with them on yesterday and the homegoing service of their all the son of Sister Lena Stegall, uh, Sister Tammy uh, Stegall, and that family on yesterday. And I'm sure they continue to need your prayers and would love to have your cards and um, concerns. And also just continue to lift up each other, our family members who are going through uh, various stages of illness. Uh, continue to lift up Sister Heather, ask you to lift up Sister Nicole um, as she recovers. Uh, and then ask you to lift up Elder Sean. He has had um, death after death. Uh, and I reminded him this morning uh, that God says he will not put any more on us than we can. But sometimes we want to say, God, it's enough. I'm good. I don't need anything else. Uh, but the scripture reminds us that we know not the day nor the hour. And um, God's timing is not our timing. And so I continue to lift up those that are going through bereavement, going through illness, any family situation. And as we begin to prepare our hearts for prayer, I ask that you will lift up those individuals that whose names I've called. And even ones that maybe I have neglected to call, not by intention, not because of my heart, but maybe because of my head, that you just continue to pray. And maybe there are ones that we don't even know, because sometimes we don't know. People will not let you know. The outside does not always reflect the inside. And so there may even be someone in this place today that's troubled, that's going through, and you're trying to hold it together, you're holding it in, because you may not be ready to share, or you may just feel people will not understand, that maybe they'll judge you. But when you can't share it with anyone else, you can share it with the Lord. And he will hear your every cry. And so now the altar is open. If you would like to come and pray and kneel at the altar, you may do so. If you would prefer to stand where you are. As you're able to pray. Please do so. In whatever circumstance, praise the Lord is waiting to hear Since from I you. Can't go. My God. 
heart is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Yes, God, yes, God, He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. Oh, his love, his love for me is just like, just like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel. Him in my soul, yes, God, yes, God is real, real in my soul, yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. It's just like your goal. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Yes, God is, yes, God is real. Most gracious and holy Father, you've heard our petitions, you've heard our lament, you've heard our shouts of joy. And now, God, we just come before you in humble submission, asking that you will take these words that we have formed, these thoughts that we have thought within these mortal and frail bodies and that you will receive them into your kingdom, God. That you will pity every moment. That you will lift us up, God, from the depths of our troubles and tribulations that you will comfort us as we mourn, that you will strengthen us as we be weak, as we feel weakness, that you will encourage us in our moments of disappointment, that you will strengthen us in our weakest hour, that you will send healing angels to encamp all around us, to restore us, Oh God, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy toward us. We thank you, God, that you're not a forgetful God, that you're not slack about your promises. Oh God, we just give you glory this morning. We give you honor. And God, as we lift up these prayers unto you, God, we humbly submit to your will, God, for our lives, in our requests, and in our petitions, that thou will shall always be done. God, we thank you right now for blessings that have already come and for grace that have already been extended and for mercy that is on the way. We thank you, God, that you're so good to us, God. We thank you, God, that you're so faithful. We thank you, God, that you continue day after day after day, night after night. In your faithfulness toward us. And now, God, receive these, our petitions, into your kingdom. This we pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father and the Son. 
and we say amen, 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 amen. Let us come together in our singing one more time. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. I'm going to ask Brother Nixon, Reverend Ezekiel, and uh, Brother um, Rodriguez to help me this time. If you can come on to the choir stand, it's uh, a song that you are <laughs> Brother Nixon, come on to the choir stand. Brother Rodriguez, come on to the choir stand. And Reverend is already in the choir stand. Lawrence, you come on too. Oh, yeah. Anybody know trouble is in my way? Trouble in my way. I have to cry 
I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. Oh, but that's all right. That's all right. Oh, cause I know Jesus. Jesus, she will fix I know Jesus. Jesus, she will fix I know Jesus. Jesus, she will fix I know that Jesus. Jesus, she will fix I know that Jesus. Jesus, she will fix After a while. Trouble in my way, 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 trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. Oh, but that's all right. Cause I know Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it after a while. After a while. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. I left and I come back and there's folks in the choir stand. Won't God do it? Yes, he'll do it. Amen. Thank you all so much. Hallelujah. The ram in the bush effect. Mm -hmm. Amen. There is a word from the Lord this morning. And I felt like it was an appropriate word today as we come to the end of this month of July and we begin to talk about planning. The work of ministry. So I want to draw your attention for just a moment to an Old Testament scripture found in the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. And we're going to go to the 13th chapter. And we're going to start at the 25th through the 33rd verse. It's about the report of the spies. And this is when Moses was being obedient to what God had told him to do. God had promised him that they would give them this land. But for Moses felt the need to send out some men to check it out. these spies to spy out the land and after they had done that they came back and this is their report it says at the end of 40 days return from spying out the land came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the Israelites in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh they bought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Yet the people who live in the land are strong. And the towns are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the land of Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live by the sea and along the Jordan. 
But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it. For we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. So they bought the Israelites back an unfavorable report of the land they had spied out, saying the land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of a great size. And there we saw the Nephilims, the Anites come from the Nephilims. And to ourselves, we seem like grasshoppers. And so we seem to them. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Father, we come right now asking you to open our eyes, God. Enable us to see beyond the physical and see spiritually. Enable us to stand firmly on your promises, God. Even when they are inconceivable to us, God. Trust you, God. Have faith in you, God. Believe in your report, God. We thank you right now, God that things are not the way they seem. And now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said amen. amen. And I just want to <clears throat> lift up a couple of those verses that says, so they bought to the Israelites and the whole congregation, an unfavorable report. And then it says, because and to ourselves, we seem like grasshoppers. And so we seem to them. <clears throat> and this morning, for the time allotted to me, I'd just like to talk for a little while from the subject, overcoming limited vision overcoming limited vision. As we move toward the month of August and fully begin outlining the process of outlining the vision here at 6045 Riverdale Road, I want us to begin to see better, to see more fully and to see more faithfully what God may be showing us. Many of us are today are familiar with the saying, and we say it quite often, that we walk by faith and not by sight. But if the truth be told, do you really? Do we really? Think about it. If it was nighttime right now in this place, or just think about it, you've been somewhere where by accident, somebody hits the light switch and it goes dark. What's the first thing you hear? <gasps> All the expressions of fear and anxiety escape before we can even control ourselves. If you walk by faith and not by sight, Think about some of us, even in our homes, at night. The first thing we have to do is turn on the light or we're going to bump into something. Something that you have placed there and have walked by, some of you for 20 and 30 years. But as soon as the lights are off, you can't see your way. So... Our sight is so important, but most of us operate with a limited sight. Some of us have no choice. Hmm. 
we can only see so far. Many of us can only visualize things from a certain distance, some of us better than others. For some, 2020 vision is a thing of the past. What we see and how we interpret what we see is a significant component of the decisions we make. Our sight determines how we react to so many things. From food, to clothes, to people, to cars, the list goes on. If it pleases our eyes, we will purchase it. If the presentation is right, we will get excited about it. If it is the right color, we will like it. From food, to clothes, to cars, to shoes, to even individuals, what we see is important. But what we see is limited. We all have such catchphrases as what you see is what you get. Then some of you say, I'll believe it when I see it. Then some say everything that looks like gold isn't gold. Other of you say, show me the money. But in order to operate in the fullness of what God has promised to us, to move forward into the next level, to go from vision to victory in the promises, we have to recognize that our sight is limited. I'm talking about our physical vision is limited. And we must be willing to overcome our limited vision. In this text, God had already promised the Israelites a good life in a prosperous land. A land that he had told them in the set verse 2. He was given to them. God had made a promise. God had extended a vision to the people that he had Moses to send out. But he had Moses to send out some individuals to spy out the land, to come and give a report on the promise. Now, we know God already knew what was in the land. He knew what was in it, who was in it. He already knew what they would find. God already had declared the vision for his people. But God sometimes wants to know if we will trust him and truly walk by faith and not by sight. So God will allow you to only glimpse a part of the vision. Not the full reality because then if you can see everything, then there's no reason for you to have faith. God needs you to overcome your limited vision. God needs you to overcome your physical vision in order for him to give you a supernatural vision. Many of us today are still living with a limited vision. We will and have not moved beyond what we can see with our own eyes. If it's not in our power to do it and achieve it, we will not step out on faith. God is reminding us today, your vision is limited, but his vision is over unlimited. Because after all, we said God is omniscient. He can see what you can't see. We said God is omnipresent in all places at all times. We say he's omnipotent, all powerful. So whose vision will you trust? I want to share a few quick thoughts with you today about this topic. First, things are not always the way they seem. The spies gave good reports on the land because they could walk on it. They gave good reports on the food because they could taste it. The figs, the grapes, the pomegranates, the milk, the honey. But then they had to rely on their limited vision and make an assumption that the people were stronger than them. Because they appeared bigger than them. They began to compare what they saw and make a determination about what it was based on a limited vision. They said, we seemed, 
we appear like grasshoppers to ourselves. And therefore, we have to look the same to them. Assumptions. They forgot about God's promises and God's presence and what seemed to be overwhelming odds. God's vision was compromised because of their limited vision. Understand that the vision God has for you is beyond your physical comprehension. It will require you to stretch. It will require you to believe in things that you never imagined were possible. It will require you to believe in, in the impossible. It will be beyond your limited eyesight and it will be beyond the limited eyesight of those around you. But to fully possess the promise to move from vision to victory, God will require a level of faithfulness beyond what you can see. God will need you to stop allowing the appearance of overwhelming odds and naysayers to cause you to become overcome by a spirit of fear. I stopped by today to tell you, just like we said, don't judge the book by the cover. Don't judge the vision by its appearance. Faith, not fear. Victory, not defeat. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 reminds us that we can only see dimly. It says, therefore, we only know in part. But we shall know fully when we trust God. And then secondly, I want you, don't let your sight limit your vision. The spies allowed what they could see in their physical to limit their vision. Verse 28 starts out with the limiting phrase, yet, which in Hebrew means except or but. Understand the vision God has for you is yours. But there are others who, when they hear about your vision and see your vision unfolding, they will not have the same report about your vision. They will quickly tell you, oh, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. What an awesome plan it is. Mm, it's coming. But, yes, that yet, but shows up and quickly enters into the conversation. Oh yes, but we tried that before and it didn't work. Yes, but we don't have the resources to do that. Yes, but we just small in comparison to others. When you know God has promised you something, when God has given the vision be willing to allow the vision of what God sees to overcome the vision of what others may see. Caleb saw the vision. Caleb trusted God. Caleb had confidence in the promise of God, but the people around him, the others, his friends, his family, the co-workers, the congregation even, will gang up on bad news. I don't know what it is about us. We love to talk about the ain't and the can't. We'll sing all day. God specializes in things that seem impossible. But then when our conversation starts, all we talk about is what is impossible. What we can't do. I stop by to let you know that the majority report can still be wrong. The people of Israel allowed the majority report to outweigh God's promise, God's vision. I stop by today to let you know the majority rule is a man's rule. And it gets you in trouble more often than it helps. Just look at our political system right now. 
the majority rule has us in trouble. The majority wants to convince us that our struggles in slavery never happened. The majority wants to convince us that slavery was good. It really wasn't bad. The majority rules wants to convince us that we should not educate our people on history. That we need to forget about that. We, the majority rule wants to take away our choice of what we learn, what we teach, what we do, our decisions we make. The majority rule will get you messed up. And because the people allowed the majority to overrule the promise of God, they lost out on their blessing. Their vision was limited because of the limited sight of others. See, sometimes, many times you have to understand what God has for you, it is for you. When God gives a vision to you, that's your vision. When God gives a vision to his people, that's our vision. Oh, yes, it may not have worked before, but that because God wasn't in it. We were trying to do it by our own power and our own might. It was our idea. It really wasn't God's idea. We were doing it because somebody else was doing it. But when God, don't give up on God's vision. Caleb never gave up. It would take them 40 years. 40 years later in Joshua 5 and 14 that Caleb finally had people around him that believed in the vision just like him. And I'm saying this message for somebody today, not just for Mount Zion, but for you in your own household, in your own career, in your own family. You may have had a vision and it seems like it hadn't been working because people have been raining on your parade for so long. They've been telling you what you can't do, what you're not able to do, what you're not smart to do, what you don't have resources to do, what, what has been done before, who tried it before and it didn't work for them. But I stopped by to let you know that if God has put that vision in you, it may take a while. He told Jeremiah, he said, write the vision and make it plain. He said, even though it may tarry, wait for it. Some of you been waiting. Some of you may have even given up because of what somebody cast doubt on. But Caleb never gave up. And 40 years later, he was able to capture the vision. He was able to defeat the giants that someone else saw. He was able to destroy the limits of someone else's limited sight. He was able to restore his vision that God had given him. Someone else's limited vision had delayed God's vision. Some of us today are in our 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s. And we've allowed the butts of others, the butts of society, the butts of limited vision, the butts of limited resources to delay and deny the promises of God for our life for a long time. But I stopped by today to tell you it's never too late to overcome your limited vision. It's never too late. And I want you to understand you have to beware of what others will report on you and to you. Mm. There used to be a song, sweep around your own front door. And then grandma used to always say, the dog that bring a bone will show carry one. Be careful of what people report to you. Be careful of what people report about your vision. 
and about God's vision. Trust him. Walk by faith with him and not by sight because what you see will limit your vision of what God has possible for you. And then finally, I want to share with you, be prepared to stand firm on the vision. Caleb was willing to challenge the vision of his companions. Caleb was willing to trust God for the promise because he knew his faith in God was not based on his sight, but on God's promise. When doubters come, when negative reports come, when people will tell you that it's not possible, you have to be willing to stand on the promise that God has given you. You have to be willing to believe and trust in the face of opposition. If you do not, then their fears will overtake you. Their sight will limit your vision. Their distrust will destroy your destiny. You will become like them. You will become little. And all your challenges and all your oppositions will begin to seem like giants. You begin to adopt a grasshopper mentality. You'll be defeated before you begin. You will doubt yourself and the promise of God for your life. You will become what they have reported on you. Not worthy, not able, not qualified, not strong enough. But remember that God gave you, God gave you the promise. And the unlimited God did not give you a limited promise or a limited vision. The God that is able to do the impossible. The God that is able to make the heavens and the earth. Why trust the reports of man? or of others about your vision? Why trust the reports of others about God's destiny? Why re, uh, trust the reports of others about the Canaan that God wants to deliver you to? Why trust the reports uh, when God has already spoken to you? God has already given you the land. God has already given you the promise. God has already given you the vision. And all he needs you to do is to walk by faith and not by sight. He needs you to trust him when you can't even trace him. He needs you to walk by faith and realize that you can't see what he sees. And realize you are the conqueror and not the consume. I stop by to let you know that you need to believe God's promise and not the pessimism of other people. Let your faith in God's vision for you to overcome the limits of those who can't see what you can see with their limited vision. Don't let the fearful reports limit your vision. Don't let your vision be blurred by others. Don't let them exaggerate the obstacles when we serve a God that can destroy any obstacle. Don't let their shouts of doubt drown out the vision God is trying to give you. I challenge you today, in the face of opposition, in the face of little people's reports, that you begin to press forward, that you begin to pursue, that you keep advancing, that you keep moving forward, that you keep walking by faith, that you keep trusting God's word, that you keep believing. Oh, the good news is that the bad reports are not true. The good news is that what they tried to do back then by themselves, we can do it now with God. The good news is they tried it but God can do it. I stopped by to let you know you need to stop listening to the wrong report and trust God because God's vision is unlimited, but the human vision is limited. So trust God. Get what God has given to you. People can't see the promises of God. That's the reason we struggle so much right now as a people. Because we want to try to operate on our human power. 
Oh, we can quote all the scriptures. We can sing all the songs. You ought to let go and let God have his way. Really? Do you? Do you let go and let God have his way? We have to begin to believe in the promises of God. We say we are a believer. We say we walk by faith and not by sight. I want to challenge you tonight. It'll be your Caleb moment. Just in your house. Turn the lights off. And your family, in a minute, they're going to be like, what are you doing in there in the dark? Tell them I'm walking by faith. And they go, like, you can't see? Tell them I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And then trust God. Truly let go and let God. And that thing that you bump into every time, I promise you, you won't bump into it. Because God will move every mountain. He will lift up your low places. He will move obstacles out of your way. You won't have to invest in night lights no more. You won't have to worry about finding the light switch before you can take a step. Because you realize, with God, my vision is unlimited. Yes, my physical vision, I take these off, I can see real good. But as it gets closer, but I can trust God that he will make a way. He will deliver on his promises. When I'm trusting these eyes, they fail me. But when I trust God and the vision that God has for me, he has not failed me yet. I promise you he hasn't failed. I am a living testimony that God keeps his promises. You may not be able to figure out. You're saying right now, Pastor, I'm, I, I'm trying. I, there's some things in my life, even at this point in my life, that I know. God still has for me. Some things he's going to give you in the ladder. It says your ladder shall be greater. Because see, if he gave it to you in your 20s and 30s, you wouldn't have known how to handle it. He had to wait until wisdom set in. He had to wait until you went through some stuff. And now in your latter years. God is beginning to work the vision. And to my younger ones, there's some things you may want to do right now and you just don't, like, God, why you hadn't? God said, you're not ready yet. I know in your mind you're ready. But there's something else you got to go through for you to really be ready. So be patient. Let the vision tarry. Don't give up on it because if God spoke it into your spirit, even when you were a child, that vision never leaves you. That thought, that idea, that concept, it, it just always sort of in the back of your mind. And believe me, it shall come forth. Come into actualization.
If you don't give up on God, God will not give up on you. So one thing I want us to do is to stop operating in our limited vision and realize we serve a God that is whew, all that and even more. And he truly can do the impossible. So walk in it by faith and not by sight. Amen. So, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. I don't take it lightly that there may be one here today that you've been walking by sight. Because you just say, you know, sometimes it seems like all of the thoughts I have is impossible. I take two steps forward and I'm taking five steps back. It seems like something's always blocking me. But I know God don't want me to keep going through this. I believe God has greater for me. To draw nearer to God. To form that relationship with him. And so if you don't have that relationship with him today, I offer it to you. If you're in our virtual space, your connection is showing up on your screen. Reach out to us so that we can connect to you. If there's one, let them come. If there's one that just needs prayer because you feel like life just been and, and you just wonder, should I just give up on the vision? Just hold on. He said, write the vision, make it plain. He said, it will tarry and then tarry with it. Wait for it. And it will come forth. It is us in our waiting. He said, Those that wait upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. God wants us to stop being an impatient person, people, and become more patient with Him. And then watch Him work in His own time. Our finance committee is preparing to come. Our giving options are beginning to appear on the screen. For those in our virtual spaces, you may give, partake of these options. Our Cash App by Gillify, our Zelle, even by mail. For those in the physical building, of course, our virtual options are available to you also. But for those who would like to give by bringing their gifts, we encourage you to begin to prepare your gifts. And let us even begin to the givers, God. Those that give of their time, their talent, their treasure. Those who give of their worship and their praise unto you. God, now take these gifts that they are preparing to give. Bless them, God, even as they give. And now, God, that which they have given, so that they give out of plenty and not out of need. Bless their households and all that they shall come in contact with. 
open their eyes to the vision that you shall have for them and enlarge their territory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may stand and just come from the outside down the aisles and then back up the middle. You have been so As you have been so You have been so good. So good. You have been so all of my needs you keep me in perfect peace so good so good lord you've been so good to me you keep me in perfect peace you supply all of my needs so good so good Lord, you've been so good to me. You keep me in perfect peace. You supply all of my needs. So good. You have been so good. So good. So Pray that your day will continue to be blessed beyond measure, that you will have a joyous week in the Lord, and that we remind you once again that we will not gather in person on next Sunday, but please join us virtually and wherever you may be, Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. Please tune in and worship with us on next Sunday. And then we look forward to welcoming you back in this physical space on the first Sunday. And great blessings upon you. Stand. God, thank you for challenging us to walk by faith and not by sight. To challenge us to overcome our limited vision of all that you have in store for us. Enable us to see fully that it is through you that we are able to have exceedingly and abundantly more than we can even imagine if we would walk by faith and not by sight. Now to him who is able to present us faultless before his throne with great joy, with dominion and power, both now and forevermore, the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You have been so good.